Good evening. Hello, students. Good evening, everybody. Hello. 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 Hello, teacher. Hello. Good evening. Teacher. Hello. Good, evening. Good, evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to our English class. So, how are you today? Great. Awesome. Awesome. Great. So, welcome to everybody. It's actually a great pleasure to be ready uh, with motivation to start our English class. And I, I'm pretty sure that we will have a great time and then we will learn together and also trying to show that we are the best. Because staying here at this time in this class, you should feel proud of yourself and also getting ready to learn and practice English. So welcome to all of you. I know that there are some students joining, joining in this um, class, that, but uh, besides the class, it's a great time to have a great conversation in English. So I would like to ask you, how's the weather like? How's the weather? Yes. It's hot, it's cold, it's windy. How's the weather like? Yes. It's <laughs> cold. It's cold. It's cold. All right. Okay. Yes. Nice. It's 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 nice. So let's start the class today. But before that, we start the class. I would like to ask you the following question: What did we study yesterday? What do you remember? We studied in the class. Give me some ideas about it. I remember we studied. Uh, Adverbs before adjectives. Oh, excellent. What else we, did we discuss about? Yes. Excuse me, teacher. I don't listen. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, did we study yesterday because we talk about adverbs uh, before adjectives but before this we uh, uh, socialized a uh, great topic what did we talk about qué más estudiamos vimos otro tema yo les pregunté y ustedes me dieron unas ideas de qué era I remember practice the conversation. It's a fairly big city. Excellent. Yes, we're talking about cities. That's good. So we were talking about cities and also we described some important details about cities. There were some cities that uh, are very beautiful, clean, um, exciting, amazing. But at the same time, we were discussing about some cities that you know, it's totally the opposite. It's ugly, polluted, um, dangerous. It's stressing because of the noise, noisy. So we were talking a little bit about cities. And we, at the same time, had the chance to uh, study some vocabulary related to uh, the city. So we're talking about that. And at the same time, I asked you yesterday um, to tell me the names of some important famous cities right here in El Salvador and you mentioned some beautiful places that we totally agree about visiting that so we continue working with the same context and yesterday because of the time and we couldn't um, continue uh, working with some exercises but we will go deeper in this time and we will try to maximize our English skills for this class, we will focus in grammar uh, because uh, according to the program, 
we have two topics that we will be developing here related to grammar. Tomorrow we will combine, um, a, well, because we will have class tomorrow for the changes that we have had. So I just going to confirm also in the, in the WhatsApp group that we will have class tomorrow. And one of the points is that we will have a, a short time to speak, read and produce the language. So let's start today with this part. And I would like to ask you, are you ready? Are you ready? Hello? Yes. Okay. Oh my God, I was, I was like, oh, they, they are not ready. Okay, but you're ready, cool. That's awesome. Okay, so let's start today talking about the video conference number two. And what's the topic? Who wants to help me to read it? What's the topic? Conjunctions. Oh, conjunctions. Okay, we're talking. Yes, we're talking about conjunctions. And there are two. What is, oh, excuse me, teacher. What is the pronunciation? Oh, conjunctions. 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 So uh, I was thinking about conjunctions. We have two types of conjunctions. We have uh, conjunctions for some specific grammar structures, coordinator uh, conjunctions and subordinated conjunctions. But today we will focus in four specifically. But at the same time, we will have a review of the previous class that was yesterday. So let's see this. Okay, the last class we couldn't uh, continue with the exercises related to adverse uh, before adjectives. Uh, as we were saying in the last class, and uh, one of the main points about adverbs uh, before adjectives is that the adverbs give uh, an extra information about the, the adjective. So it give a plus to the statement. So we're saying that uh, the adverbs can be used to modify an adjective or an entire sentence. When modifying an adjective, the adverb immediately precedes, particularly hot weather, recently reelected. And also we could read some um, statements using a uh, cursive, like really, fairly, very, to, and I just want to make sure that you remember the structures that we were studying. Let me ask you, and we were going to try to say that in Spanish. ¿Qué significaba really? ¿Qué se acuerdan qué significaba? Realmente. Realmente. Mm -hmm. ¿Verdad? ¿En serio? ¿Cierto? 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 Es una afirmación de verdad. Exactly. We confirm. Confirmamos. Yes. Vamos con fairly. ¿Qué significaba fairly? What was the meaning about fairly? Similar a big. Uh, bast yeah. Como bastante. bastante. Yes. It's like uh, bastante, you know, fairly. And also, what was the meaning about very? Mucho. Very is muy. Muy. Mucho. Así muy. es. Mucho o oh. muy. En, de, entonces, en este caso, pues nos combina very. Porque yo puedo decir... Oh, look at this cell phone. Uh, well, I got a cell phone with me here. Look at this. I got a cell phone. I can say, you know, the cell phone is expensive. But if I use the adverbs, it uh, modifies the adjective. I can say, no, it's very expensive. Ya no es costoso, sino que es muy costoso. Entonces le da un contexto un poquito de más real a la estructura. Eh, o sobre todo el adjetivo. And also two, ¿qué significaba two? También. Eh, Mucho. Eh, así es, o significa tan, tan. It's too noisy. Es tan ruidoso. It's too noisy. Eh, for example, when you go to a place and, you know, you listen a lot of noise, you are like, you know what? 
this place is too uh, noisy. And also we have the next one, too crowded. Too crowded. Look at that. And also, eh, yeah. es para decir demasiado concurrido o tan concurrido. Entonces, ese significado de too crowded. Okay, so after that, we have some statements. And it says, let's see what it says. Match the equations with the answers. Then practice the conversation. What Zills like? And also it says, is it an interesting place? What possible answer we can uh, select according to the, to the statement and questions number one? What Zills like? Is it an interesting place? And also we have option A, option B, option C, and option D. We had to look for the best choice to answer uh, the two statements. Option D. What else? Not really. Uh, what do you think? C. Yes, I guess. Uh, with uh, option Letter C. Ah, let's see. Letter C. Uh, what souls like? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, it has amazing shopping, and the people are pretty friendly. Letter D. Letter D. Letter D. Uh, what souls like? Not really. It's so small, and it's really boring. That's why I move away. Okay, focus about that. I will give you uh, two minutes. Select the best choice and then we will socialize the answers. Okay? Okay. Let's go. I'm ready, teacher. Thank you. I'm finished, teacher. Okay, so I think that we are almost ready. And we will try to uh, match um, the equations with the answers. Remember that the, there could be um there are some statements that could match also so let's compare it with the first one um let's see what sounds like is it an interesting place what do you think could be the possible answer letter c letter c yes okay let's see what happens so we can we can use it as a possible choice uh, do you like your hometown? Why or why not? Uh, letter D. Letter, letter D. D, teacher. Letter D. Uh, letter D. Teacher. No, really. Possible. Okay, not really. It's too Number small. Two D. Okay. 
Let's see. Not really, it's too small and it's really boring. That's why I move away. It's a good possibility because it's asking directly, you know, if like it or not. So we could match. Number three, what's Zini Sydney like? Letter A. 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 Okay, perfect. And the last, but not the least, what do you have for the number four? Number letter four. B. B. Letter, letter B. B. Letter, letter B. B. Letter B. Okay. B. Right. Yes, I have. It's an ex extremely large and crowded place, but I love it. It has an excellent restaurant. Excellent restaurants. Okay. So congratulations. We did a great job today uh, identifying the appropriate answer according to the equations. We will go on to the next part because we have a, a, another exercise similar to this one. Before that we go on to the next part, so we would like to ask if you have questions about that. Do you have a question? No, I don't have a question. No vocabulary? No questions related to vocabulary? No, right? No. Easy, easy, like a piece of cake. Easy, like eating pupusas. Very easy. Teacher. Yes, tell me. Yes. What do you say, uh, extremely? Oh, uh, how do you say? It's uh, with E, extremely. Um, Extreme, extremely. Extremely. Extremely, yes. Okay, okay. can you repeat it? Can you repeat the word? Extreme. Extreme. Extremely. Extreme. Yeah, with E. So E, E, extremely. Extremely. Yes, correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we go on to the next part and uh, we have the next exercise. Sorry. Okay, look at that. So I will clean up all stuff here. Okay, the next challenge we have here is that we had to match the equations with the answers. Um, what What's uh, Samana like? And also you have seven possible choices. And have you ever gone to Santo Domingo? Do you like Mexico? What's uh, Nagua like? Have you ever visited? Do you like your city? Have you ever gone to Bra Bravario, Bravado, so that was Bravado, and what's your hometown like? And we have seven possible choices like, yes, I've gone there twice. It's fairly modern and big. Number two, it's uh, somewhat beautiful and it's really crowded in summer. Number three, yes, I like it. It's not too noisy. Number four, no, but I think the beaches are fairly good to swim. Number five, it's extremely boring and quiet. That's why I moved here. Number six, no, I, I don't. It's not too modern and it's pretty dangerous. And the last, oh yes, it's a tourist place. It's really interesting and the nightclubs are great. So what we had to do is that we had to match the equation with the possible answer, similar to the previous exercise. So I will give you a time to do that, okay? So when you're ready, you can uh, turn on the microphone and say, teacher William, I'm ready. Let's go.
or not. Almost ready? Not yet. Hello, are you ready? Not yet, T-shirt, Max. 
Okay, so let's compare the answers. I know that there are some statements that are very similar and also there are some others that not. Look at this. Okay, help me with the number one. What's the man I like? Number two. Number two, teacher. Loco. Number two. Yes, number two. Okay, so we also we can uh, check uh, what's somebody like. It's somewhat beautiful and it's really crowded in summer. Okay, there is a possibility that we can use. Remember that there are some uh, statements that could fit in, in others. The most important thing is that we can give like kind of context to each one. Have you ever gone to Santo Domingo? Seven could be uh, have you again to some? Yes, I have gone Seven. twice, uh, or probably Seven. number one. Number one for me, is, for me, is seven. It's Seven. A, remember, have you gone? Yes, I have gone. So you ask in present perfect, so you answer in present perfect. Um, for the structure, the question because of the structures, of course, and also the question letter F also can be used. As that, eh, what's the matter like? Oh, yes. Um, cuando nos dice, oh, yes, es porque te está preguntando que confirmes. So, um, have you ever gone? Oh, yes, it's a tourist place. And also seven also could help. Why not? Seven could be a good choice too. And um, letter C, uh, do you like Mexico? Letter seven. Number seven. Number Oh, Again. yes, it's a tourist place, Number really six. interesting in the nightclub. Six. Number six, six. Probably. Seven. Seven. Yes, seven. it's probably seven. And also, do you like Mexico? No, I don't. Me gusta porque como preguntan con el presente simple y, res y, re y responde con el presente simple. De hecho, esta oración también es presente simple. Oh, yes, it's a tourist place too. So there is a possibility to use seven. There is a possibility to use six because of the context. So let's take it for the moment. Letter D, what's uh, Niagua like? Have you ever visited? Look at this. Number four. Number three. Number six. No, what's like? Um, Number six. Um, Number one. Then number three. Okay, number uh, what um what's Niagua like? Have you ever visited? Nos pregunta cómo es y si lo ha visitado. La combinación el presente simple y el presente perfecto. Entonces la respuesta podría ser yes or not. So probably number four. Number one, teacher. Okay, number four. No, I think uh, the fishes are very good to swim. In, in number six, teacher? number 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 six. Um, yeah, could be a no, possibility. Exactly. No, I don't. It's not too modern and it exactly. is very dangerous. Yes, como como ustedes saben, eh, hay respuestas que sí casan con otras. Unas sí, otras no. Es decir, nosotros podemos buscar la la respuesta que sea como más apropiada al contexto. Eh, la respuesta me tiene que decir sí o no y que si lo he visitado. Eh, entonces, number six is a possible choice too. And also, eh, number one also could be possible too. También mm -hmm. número uno could be possible too. Eh, esas opciones, six and one. Entonces, lo dejamos así. Eh, 
Vamos a ver. The next Turn one. A. Do you like your city? Number three. Yes, I like Number it. Number three. I like the too noisy. Yes, I like it. It's not too noisy. Yeah, it's a possible choice too. Um, uh, the next one. Uh, have you ever gone to the Vardo? Number four. Number four. Number five. Mm -hmm. Number five. Yes. Oh, it's uh, extremely boring and Kiev. That's why I moved here. Eh, cuando te dicen has ido, por lo general respondemos sí o no y explicamos por qué. Have you ever uh, gone to the bottle? No, but I think the beaches are very good to swim. Maybe there is a possibility. Um, there is a possibility too. And also it's extremely boring and quiet. That's why I moved here. Um, I think no, because this person has been there. And uh, letter G, what's your hometown like? Aquí me dice que lo describa, como es. Incluso ahí dice que como es extremadamente aburrido y silencioso, por eso se movió de ahí. Ajá. What's your hometown like? Yes, also it's a possibility too. Of course. Yes, I think it's okay. So as I told you, the, some statements uh, have a closer relationship with others that we have to look for the best choice for each one, okay? So that's the most important. Let's continue with the next exercise. So we will um, go on to the next part of this exercise here. And adverse followed by adjectives. This is pretty easy because we have to look for the best choice. This is related to the context. So for that reason, I want you to focus. Uh, choose the, uh, at least the microphone. There is a microphone active. Thanks. It says, uh, choose the correct sentences to make conversation. We have the first one. I feel safe in Chicago. So what's the possible answer? You are right. It's pretty safe. Or you are right. It's not too safe. So it's easy. The, so you you had to. Option. So I want you to focus about that. Okay, work in the exercise, and um, and after that we compare the answers together. Let's go. The second option.
Okay, almost ready? Yes, teacher. I think so. Yes, teacher. I'm ready, teacher. Excellent. So let's let's try. I'm ready, teacher. Awesome, so because she will help me with this exercise. That's uh, something necessary. Okay, let's check here and uh, we will choose the best choice for this statement. Who wants to help me to read the sentence and the possible answer? Uh, the second option. Oh, read the sentence. The second option. The first option. You're right. I, you say. I think that is the first option. First option. It says, I feel safe. I in feel Chicago. safe in Chicago. You're right. It's pretty safe. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, because the person confirms that it's a safe place. So, the first person says, you know, I feel safe. So, with property. The other person says, you know, um, you're right. So it's pretty safe. It's pretty easy answer. Number two, a volunteer to read it. Me, teacher. Okay. Is the uh, is the second option the answer? Okay. It's, pre it's pretty exciting too. And it's very beautiful. I think so. Okay, so um, you said that could be this choice is pretty exciting too. Um, what do you think is the answer? And it's very beautiful. And it's very beautiful. And it's very beautiful. The first option. Second option. The first option. If we're saying it, when we use but, we are like um, saying, you know, I, I agree about this part, but in the other side, so it's totally different. So the best choice could be, it's very exciting too, and it's very beautiful. You confirm something and you add an extra information about the description. Um, okay. But when you say but, you're saying, hey, pero, so it doesn't match uh, with the statement. Okay, uh, number three, another volunteer. Francisco, hi. Number three, it's really hot in the summer and cold in the winter. The answer, I think, it's very nice in the spring, so. Okay, um, what do you think? Um, I think option to second option. The second option. The second option. It's really hot in summer and cold in the winter. Um, it's not very nice in the spring, though. Uh, it, it's very nice in the spring. Because it's really hot in the summer and very hot in the winter. But it's genial in the primavera. Aunque, perdón, aunque it's very genial in the primavera. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very nice in the spring, though. Uh, or it's not very nice in the spring, though. So the first one could be a possibility. What do you think? It's a possibility. The first option. Yeah, the first the option. First, the first option. Yeah. Yeah, the first section could be a possibility. So you're confirming about the cold and, and hot, but in spring is like the middle, like a balance related to, to the weather condition. So look at the next one, the number four, and who wants to help me to read this one? Hey, teacher. Yes. Uh, there are some nice mus museum and probably and the first option, and they're not interesting. Uh, you say museums. Uh, the Museum. S with S, museums, like Pluto. Museums. Yes, we're, yeah, we're talking about Pluto. And uh, so there are some nice museums. And mm -hmm. so you say that the first choice could be better. 
What do you think, guys? What do you think? Could be the first of this, this, this second option. For me, for me, the second option. The second option, or teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay, They because because museums are interesting. <laughs> We love museums. I love yes. going to museums, and and I, I I totally agree because when when people go to museums, most of the time are crowded so a lot of people taking photos um visiting the place so you know it's the best choice in that case the part two okay exercise number five who wants to help me to read it me teacher yes okay number five there are great shows for me i think option uh, the first Option Hello. Hey, um, what do you think, guys? Yes, it's the first it's option. Yes, yes, the first it's option. Yes, I agree with you. Okay. There are great shows. Some, Some of them are expensive, however. Okay. However. Yeah. The page. The, page. Yes. the first one. Teacher. Yes, hi. What is the meaning, however? However, however, huh? it, uh, however it has uh, some specific meanings that we say, uh, sin embargo. Okay, thank yes. you. Yes, all right, you're welcome. And also uh, you say, however, y los británicos dicen, however, it's however. however. It's like however. The, the, the accent, you know, however, It's important, you know, that the accent switches. Um, so, yes, yeah, so there's a possibility that there are great shows, films that are expensive, however. Number six, Lake Michigan is pretty clean. Hi, teacher. Hi. First. Hey, hey, uh, first. Option, option B. Option two. Yeah. The, first option, teacher. the first the first option teacher okay the first option teacher yeah because the statement says that it's pretty clean so this person is confirming pretty eh, el adverbio and clean the adjective pretty clean bastante limpio entonces eh, o muy limpio también podemos dar el significado de muy limpio so that uh, confirms that case that we can use it Okay, great job. So we did a great job today, guys. So let's work right now with the following exercise. We have some minutes, but I would like to, well, I will stop sharing here my screen because I need to to check the attendance list because it's very important um, having you here in this class and also, one second, please. Second. Extension. Okay, just give me one moment. Meanwhile, I look for here the list. Okay, you listen your name and you say present. Um, Amanda Jamilet, chicas? Yes, teacher, present. Okay. Andrea Gabriela Maravilla? Present, teacher. Uh, Brenda Liliana Quintanilla? 
Brenda. Carlos Edgardo Cruz. Present. Thanks. Carmen Lisette Santillana. Present, teacher. Thank you. Francisco Antonio Calderón. I'm here, teacher. Thanks. Uh, Ivan... Ibrahim Ramirez. Present, teacher. Present. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Tatiana Gutierrez. Present. Excellent. Jorge Alberto Rivera Ramos. Present teacher. Okay. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Alberto Enriquez. Present. Thank you. Jose Alexander Hernandez. Present. Present. Uh, Karen Elizabeth Bernal. Present teacher. Thanks. Uh, Karina Alejandra Aquino. Present teacher. Uh, Carla Lisette Martinez Navarro. Present teacher. Carla Stephanie Rivera. I'm here, teacher. Thanks. Eh, Catherine Iracema Vialta. Present. Leticia Aide Flores. Present. Eh, Linda uh, Beatriz López de Fuentes. Present. Luis Eduardo Méndez Torres. I'm here. Eh, Mayra Xiomara Guevara. Eh, María Dolores García de López. Present teacher. Eh, Maritza Elizabeth Rojas. Maritza. Eh, Melissa Stephanie Linares. Present. Nelson eh, Rodimiro Pineda. Present teacher. Thanks. Osmin eh, Vidal Rivera. Present teacher. Eh, Romeo Vladimir Rosales. Present teacher. Uh, Sara Elisa Belloso Hernández. Sara Elisa. Wendy Paola López. Present teacher. Eh, Yolanda del Carmen Hernández. Present. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so let's continue with the next part of the class. We got a great topic that I want you to socialize in this um, process. So we have the next part. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Okay, perfect. So we have the next topic that is called conjunctions. We were saying that we used all the time conjunctions in the process. And um, we will have a short backup related to conjunctions. I would like to ask you, what do you know about conjunctions? I would like to ask you, and if you have a, a knowledge related to that. Like conductores. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. So con a conjunction is a word that connect closes or sentences. When you listen the word closed, closes are sentences. So the closes or these words connect one sentence to another sentence. For example, I can say, you know, El Salvador has beautiful beaches and interesting people. So N becomes a conjunction because connect one sentence to the other one. El Salvador is a very beautiful place, but it was dangerous in the past. So we use but as contrast. So we join the first part of the sentence and the other part of the sentence by the conjunction because the conjunction connects. That's uh, the point about it. And at the same time, the action or an instance of two or more events or things occurring at the same point in time or space. And also we have two. It's an exciting city, coma, coma. It's an exciting city and the weather is nice. Entonces, la primera oración es, it's an exciting city. 
Entonces, esta es una oración porque tiene sujeto, verbo y complemento. Pero yo quiero unir esta oración y quiero unir the weather is nice. También es una oración completa. En inglés se le llama independent clauses o oraciones independientes porque con, con, eh, contienen sujeto, verbo y complemento. The weather is nice. El sujeto es the weather. Yes. Is yes, es sí, el sí. verbo y nice es el complemento or the predicate que comienza desde el verbo. Entonces, para unir, it's an exciting city and the weather is nice, yo utilizo un conjunction. Entonces, yo digo, it's an exciting city, coma, and the weather is nice. Ya uní dos oraciones haciendo una sola. Esa es la función de un conjunction. Connects clauses or connect sentences. Vamos con la siguiente. Oh, it's a big city, but it's not too big. Es una gran ciudad, pero no es tan grande. Entonces, ese pero me contrasta. Me dice una cosa, pero del otro lado es distinto. Entonces, it contrasts uh, the sentence. Entonces, tenemos and, que es y, and bad, que significa pero. Y eso es una conjunction. Esta parte se le conoce como coordin coordinated conjunctions. Ya es una estructura eh, bastante importante del inglés. Entonces, es una coordinated conjunction. Porque esta, esta conjunción nos ayuda a unir dos oraciones para hacer una sola. Y vamos con la siguiente, que en este caso eh, tenemos la siguiente oración. Look at the statement. ¿Quién me ayuda a leer la siguiente oración que está a la derecha? Donde dice, it's a big city. Me, teacher. Yes, thank you. It's a big city. It's not too big. Found. Found. It's not too big, Toad. Yes. Thank you. So, in that case, so we can see that uh, we use the, the word Toad. So, it's a big city. So, look at the context. Um, es una ciudad grande, aunque no es demasiado grande. Entonces, vemos la palabra Toad. Para decir eh, aunque. Entonces vemos que though es como decir aunque. Entonces decimos, es una gran ciudad. It's a big city. It's not big though. Entonces eh, vemos que está acá en color negrito. Y a esta se le llama subordinator conjunctions. Eh, la diferencia entre un coordinator y un subordinator es que los coordinators son, eh, son siete específicos. Y eh, subordinators son muchos más. Hay unas grandes cantidades. Pero nosotros nos vamos a enfocar en estas cuatro eh, conjunciones. Vamos con la siguiente. It's a big city. It's not too big, however. Teacher, I have a question. Yes. Uh, Esta la vamos a utilizar siempre al final de la oración. Eh, estas pueden ir, eh, por lo general, pueden ir al final o incluso pueden eh, ir en medio también. No hay ningún inconveniente. Eh, por, lo, por lo general, van siempre al final. En el caso de so and however, por ejemplo, yo puedo decir, oh, it's a big city, however, it's not too big. O puedo decir, it's a big city, it's uh, not too big, however. Entonces, eh, pueden ir en estos dos lugares. No hay ningún problema. Sí. Y siempre hay que ponerle la coma. La coma, así es. Siempre hay que poner la coma. Entonces okay, decimos, you. you're welcome. ¿Y qué significa however? Significa sin embargo. Es una gran ciudad, sin embargo, no es tan grande. Entonces we say, no, it's a big city and it's not too big, however. Entonces ahí nosotros le damos eh, nuestro contexto. Solo quiero comentarles algo. Eh, nosotros podemos, eh, tenemos el vocabulario y tenemos la estructura, pero cuando nosotros queremos traducirlo o interpretarlo al español, nosotros tenemos que darle nuestro propio orden, porque eh, como sabemos que el inglés es muy diferente al español en cuanto a orden y estructuras gramaticales. Les pongo el ejemplo, cuando nosotros utilizamos un, eh, en una palabra utilizamos un adjetivo, 
Y un sustantivo, happy house. Eh, happy house. Happy student. Entonces nosotros no decimos eh, feliz estudiante, nosotros decimos estudiante feliz. Entonces nosotros al momento de la interpretación tenemos que dar, pasar esa estructura a nuestro propio contexto, a nuestro propio idioma. Entonces si yo dijera, es una gran ciudad, no es muy grande, sin embargo, es como que, eh, pero cuando nosotros lo interpretamos, lo tenemos que interpretar a nuestro modo. Es una gran ciudad, sin embargo, no es muy grande. Eso sería para nosotros en español la mejor manera. Entonces, siempre que, que vayamos a utilizar los dos idiomas, tenemos que asegurarnos que le tenemos que dar nuestro contexto, no el orden que está en inglés, porque inglés es distinto. Ok, so what I want you to do, um, it's to work in the six exercises we have here. And I know that we won't have like too much time because it's, uh, it's going to be nine. But uh, tomorrow we will continue working with this. And also that can help you as, uh, as part of the homework. And tomorrow in the first part of the class, we can take a time to uh, work in this exercise. So don't forget that tomorrow we will connect um, according to the information given. And I hope to see you tomorrow, guys. Before we conclude, I would like to ask you if you have a question or a comment or something that you want to know. Uh, recuerden que si tienen preguntas, igual me escriben. Eh, teachers, me surgió una pregunta y pues me, me la hacen y pues con mucho gusto les ayudo. Um, ¿Alguna consulta o algo antes de finalizar? Teacher I, teacher me. Yes. What is the pronunciation the uh, throw? Eh, aunque. Ah, do, do. It's like D, do. Do. Yes. Con, con D? Ajá, como que fuera con D, do. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, um, guys. Thank you so much and have a beautiful night to all of you. Thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Thank See you, you tomorrow. Bye bye. Teacher. Bye bye. Thank you. Good night, teacher. To see you and nice to meet you.